I V M. Hello and welcome to the Habit Coach Podcast. I am Ashton Doctor, your Habit Coach, and today we're going to be discussing about the different kinds of sexual identities that we have, or understanding what our preferences are, especially when it comes into the world of relationships. So today we have a relationship. Dating and intimacy coach with us, Ali. Welcome to the Happy Coach Podcast. Thank you for having me. <laughs> I am super excited about this because it is a burning topic. Like, um, you know, you help people out with understanding what are the aspects of intimacy in their life, right? Like, what are the some of the challenging cases that you get with people? So most of my clients are couples who maybe have been married. it could be between 1 year to 10 years so there are multiple issues that people face when they get married like initially if they haven't had sex before before marriage so they don't know what uh, the other person is intimately like like Correct. physically they don't know like what they enjoy and there's a lot of taboo like talking about sex so they get married and then they start having sex and maybe both of them don't have experience maybe one has more experience than the other and then you know issues like okay this is not really working out i'm not feeling what i'm supposed to feel i don't even know what i'm supposed to feel is this right or wrong that's like some examples and then others like we've been together for 5 uh, years maybe something has changed uh, but it's not exciting anymore or whatever worked before it's not really working right now So what I do is um and these are all separate categories right they're all deep in their own way Yeah 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 I mean the, the issues are uh, there are nuances to the to the problems people face so okay. some of them a lot of them don't know what they actually enjoy especially people who identify as women they are not really used to talk about desire they are not used to talk about pleasure they are not used to talk about sex like sex has always been something that is uh, you know men can talk about men are allowed to talk about and if you are a woman and you enjoy or like can you actually say that you enjoy it Correct. or do you even enjoy it because you don't know you've never been allowed to even speak about this kind of like is sex something that a woman is supposed to do or enjoy in the first place correct so there is a lot of dynamics there but what happens is that we learn our pleasure or like our sexual selves throughout our lives okay. you know we all experience most of us experience arousal at some point and usually that happens that it can happen in the womb okay it, it does happen in the womb you have so, erections in the womb etc right yeah so the pleasure that you get from touching your genitals starts from before you're born correct okay then we get socialized and we see that as something wrong now it depends on what kind of experiences with pleasure or uh, you have had as a child at what point you felt aroused and recognized what kind of reaction you got to that towards that arousal as well as what kind of experiences you had emotionally and physically across your life and all of these experiences will determine what kind of sex you enjoy what turns you on so nobody talks about this but for example if you have been brought up to romance or watching romantic movies love stories you understand arousal through that and you might get turned on if someone maybe gives you a rose or reads poetry to you and you would fall under what i call the sexual dimension of romance and love but for example if it's someone who has been exposed to porn from earlier in life or even later on you might enjoy more graphic situation more animalistic more primal scenarios where there is a pushing pulling of the body biting using of explicit words or something that you have learned through porn and i would call people who enjoy that those who have a, a sexual dimension called passion okay okay so i have kind of slotted them into groups because with uh, so many clients i've kind of figured that 
broadly speaking, we all fall into these five buckets. Of course, there are like many and, and you can enjoy like one sectional dimension versus another. Um, and with different partners, you could explore different aspects of this. Also, yeah, yeah. yeah. So these are the two primary ones that we find very often. Uh, we have also people who get turned on by um, in connection to the elements like fire, water, uh, nature the soul it's more a spiritual experience for them than for the ones who are even in love and romance so how would you define this one this one's an interesting one i haven't uh, thought about this particular dimension before so how would you identify something like this so a lot of people are drawn into out of the body experiences uh Tantra, you might have uh, spent a lot of time in your childhood in nature, for example, or you might have maybe your parents or someone around you was very, very spiritual mm. and you connect to certain energies like not we don't all do it. Like obviously not everybody sitting there like waiting to become a Baba or a saint, but there is a way of expressing even arousal and, and erotic energy through spirituality. Correct. And uh, for some people, it just works out much better and if they don't get that connection they're not turned on right like so if you put someone who's a spiritual sexual dimension with someone who's a passionate one it's yeah. a mess it it's work. chaos yeah. it's it's like one will feel disrespected the other one will will feel like completely turned off one is talking about like okay i can feel the energy and i can feel your heart breathe and breath and the other one is like okay i just want to like bang you on the table right so that's you know it's like different languages or expressions of eroticism of arousal and pleasure you also have is people who get turned on by new experiences like everything needs this kick of novelty Novelty and adventure. So they are novelty seeking. This could be by changing your partner, having new partners, having new sex toys, having, you know, being turned on by new positions or new locations. You know, some people are like, okay, let's try it in the airplane. Let's do it in a hotel room. Let's do it like uh, somewhere public in a, on the roadside or in a car. That works for some people. But for some, it's like extremely frightening and stressful because they need the comfort of a romantic setup, their own room, their clean sheets, you know, all of that. So with uh, partners who don't know about these things, like they don't really think about, OK, what is it that I enjoy really? When they first meet into the bedroom and they start having sex, then it's all over the place. And then you start saying, like, oh, I am not in love with this person. Or how can I live with this person for the rest of my life? If this, this is going to be sex. So besides these, you know, dimensions or ident sexual identities that exist or the narratives that really turn us on. So besides these things, like we also, people don't know, like, how their bodies react to things. And what I mean by things is like, are you someone who just wants to shut their eyes and feel the sensations in your body and don't want any external dis disturbance? Or are you someone who actually get turned on by saying things to your partner or like having your partner saying things to you? So these are sexual styles, you know, of understanding what the body wants. Uh, some people get turned on by seeing things, you know, and therefore, like, it's important for them to have mirrors or maybe they want to be seen. So they, you know, want others to actually look at them, do things. And yeah. that's what they turn on is. And then there is a whole bunch of people who cannot have sex unless they are really involved with their partners. So partner focus extreme, like they will not be able, these are the people who will never be able to have a one night stand. Mm. So why push them into that scenario as well, right? Correct. So like usually now if these are, if a couple or a throuple or multiple people are into different sexual dimensions, like how do you bridge that gap? And the way or the method that we use, at least at the Dream Security, is that we we talk to people about the pillars of sex. Okay. So one is eye contact. Mm -hmm. Secondly is breath. Mm -hmm. In fact, breath should be the first one, then eye contact. Touch, words, and actions. Mm -hmm. When 
I want to create. So you can actually recreate these moods and test them out with your partner. Okay. So if you want to have a passionate scene, like what are the kind of words that you can actually use? What type of touch do you use? Like a touch that is used in a passionate scene or in a passionate dimension, it's more... Um, Primal. So again, like you might bite someone, you might lick someone. It's almost like you are this animal and there is a lot of intense energy. So how do you even build that intense energy is through breath. Mm -hmm. Like if you breathe deeper and faster, you know, it's kind of <sighs> you already create that passionate, you know, energy within your body. There is this fire that comes and then you just have to with your body and with your touch kind of, you know, Release express it. it, release it with the other person. Obviously, you have to be in tune. So you can actually build that up. And you can do it in a playful way. So it doesn't have to be serious like, okay, I'm the one who only enjoys this. Okay, let's try something, mm. you know. And we can do it with these tools. Mm. Again, touch. Is it like a spank? Is it like a, you know, pinch? Is it pushing, pulling? These are ways of building that energy. Besides the actions, you know, again, like you can throw someone on the table, uh, you can be a bit more forceful. Obviously, it needs to be consensual and you, you both need to agree that this is what we are playing out. Correct. Again, you can also change everything, like you can change the breath when you are in a romantic situation. So the breath is deeper, the eye gaze is softer, the words are more like, okay, this is you know, I love you and I love being with you and I love your beautiful. So you use a lot the word love and you can create that romantic scene. That doesn't mean that you need to feel the romance for the rest of your life and be in love with that person. But you can recreate that scene if it turns on that person. Correct. And then you have your your kinks, your power dynamics. So even in those, the touch changes because you might be using tools, for example, like you'd be using a flogger or a spanker, whatever, a pad, etc. And the way you will breed is going to be more controlled. The eye gaze is more controlled. So you want to really control the entire energetic flow in your body to recreate a power dynamic or like a kinky experience, which again is going to be very different from a novelty, an adventure, or a spiritual one where it's you create the energy through breaths and sometimes in a spiritual scenario, in tantric sex, you don't even touch each other. Correct. You know, you just stay with the energy and breathe. So these are like tools that uh, we use to bridge that gap and for people to experience different things and different dimensions and understand that it's not really who they are, it's just how they've learned. That's why it arouses them. That doesn't mean that you cannot go somewhere else and try something new. Just because this was your idea of what sex is doesn't mean that you cannot try and understand a different dimension of what yeah. your partner might think of as good sex or sex in, in general. Yeah, like I ideally meaningful sex. Meaningful sex, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, if you haven't heard the other podcast, please make sure you listen to the other podcast because that's all about meaningful dating. All right, so meaningful sex, I like that. Yeah, so meaningful sex and this is just the outer layer of your behavior. So what you're going to do, but is it why you do it? So what the most important thing is in sex and any kind of like physical intimacy is why, the purpose, mm. why you're doing what you're doing. Okay. So many people have different reasons for having sex, but usually they are connected to your childhood experience and unmet needs of when you were a child. So some people might feel, you know, that they want to be dominant. They want to feel dominant. Some people want to feel submissive. Some people want to feel playful. Some people want to feel loved and cared. So there are all these feelings that it's important for you to understand before you engage in any of this like hanky panky spanky you know romance whatever you want to call it yeah where it's coming from right that is the starting yeah, point yeah so for example like if you have not uh, if you were not seen your parents maybe were very busy and uh, there was no attention enough attention for you maybe you know you grew up in an environment where nudity was not allowed 
So that unmet need to be seen stays with you and you start creating fantasies around it. Mm. Okay. And obviously you as a child, you cannot really go there and say like, hey, you know, this is not really working for me. I'm leaving now. Mm. So you start fantasizing and oftentimes you kind of connect these fantasies to your arousal. And that's why you have so many different things that people want to feel when they have sex. Mm. Now, if I want to feel playful during sex, that playfulness can be expressed in these different ways. So Correct. you can be playful and spiritual, you know, and create a whole scene around, you know, playfulness and, you know, running around the room or like just touching swiftly or maybe just going into some kind of visualization where the energy is floating around in the room. That's an experience that you can have. You can be playful in a, in a kinky zone where you, you know, give a command and there, there's a bratty sub. So there are all different dimensions. So, and you can play within all of them as long as you know what is it that you want to feel. Mm. And these feelings are what, I mean, I call core desires don't change. All the way you express them can change. But what you actually want to feel during a sexual or a physical intimate encounter does not change. So core desire, that means that this is the desire of both partners or all partners in that particular moment. Or is it your own desire? It's your own. Okay. It's your own. So... You can establish what the desires are. They could be different. Mm. You know, maybe both of you want to feel dominant. Right. Yeah. And that's perfectly fine mm. because you can switch. Mm. You can do, okay, now let's do like half of the time I'm the dominant one and half of the time you do the dominant okay. one. You know, someone might have adventure like, okay, let's address this desire, right. my partner's desire, and then let's address mine. So it doesn't have to be like, okay, we just go somewhere and then we stay there you can move around it's that's why it's called in the kinky world it's called play but that's what sex should be right. uh, a playful experience something to distress from working a lot something to distress from like life responsibilities and it's really nice when you do it with a partner and you do it in a mindful way where you know that this is what your par part your partner actually wants to get this is the feeling they're trying to get this is how they express it or this is how they want to be touched they want to be touched softly you know exactly which spots they want to be touched in and how you know exactly what kind of words will turn them on you know exactly what kind of actions will turn them on and then you can breed together you can like look into each other's eyes and just build on that erotic energy by adding the type of touch they want the type of words they want to hear or the type of experience they want to have this is very interesting because i know so many couples that have lost their interest in sex after like Five years, ten years, right? What are the first steps to bringing that back? Like, how should people, you know, it became monotonous after a while, then life took over. How do you bring back that? Yeah, the intention needs to be there. Both of you need to want to bring it back. If it's just one person. Do you think that only one person often? Uh, like when you with your I clients? mean usually like it depends on what kind of mind frame they are like it it is usually one that uh, feels the most but I'm not saying that that's the only scenario I mean sometimes both of them realize like okay it's not happening anymore like what is going on but yeah usually it's like one partner they feel like okay there is where is the fun fun is gone we used to do it before so the I mean, often women after pregnancy, you know, they're running around the children. I mean, we're still playing those very typical, stereotypical and traditional gender roles here, you know. Correct. Woman is taking care of the child for a number of years. And then, uh, obviously, if you are in that sort of stress, you cannot think of fun. No, absolutely. You know, unless you schedule it and you feel it's important. Is it important to you? That's the first question. How important is this for you? Are you willing to work towards it? Because it will take scheduling, mm. you know? In fact, children are the best contraceptives, right? Like, <laughs> a child becomes so difficult to have sex again. Correct. We're going to take a quick break. See you on the other side. Hello, hello. It's been another great week on the IBM Podcasts Network. On Think Fast, Varun and Suchita talk about plant-based meat and Reliance's succession plan. On Don Baika Gappa Aika, Aparna and Avanti discuss how the generation of parents are moving away from the traditional approach. On Press Decode, Sara Vagda and Prafula decode the Udaipur and Amravati killings. On the Musafir stories, Saif and Faiza talk to Amol Vanjari, co-founder of Orange Odyssey, about curating heritage experiences around Nagpur. 
and on IVM likes Snehil Antarik Saurabh and Abbas fawn over Shah Rukh Khan celebrating his 30th anniversary in Bollywood. Do not forget IVM podcast has just launched its merch and the first line is out now. Head to the IVM podcast website, click on the shop tab to check out our first collection of t-shirts. Do follow us on social media. We are IVM Podcasts on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram and LinkedIn. And remember, if you are enjoying this show or any of our other shows for that matter, please 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 do tell a friend. Also, don't forget to rate us on any platform you're listening to. You can also check us out on YouTube. We're also doing a small listener survey to better understand how you respond to our shows and advertising on the network. We would really appreciate it if you could spare a few minutes to fill it. It helps us build better shows for you. And finally, we would like to thank our sponsors this week. Boat Lifestyle, Small Case, Cap Gemini, Intel V Pro, and Intel. Future banao wonderful with Intel powered laptops. Welcome back. All right, let's jump into the conversation. And uh, schedule like like you said, right? Many people say like, but that takes away the spontaneity of it all. But sometimes you need to schedule it, right? You have to. Hmm. Like it's like expecting that it's going to be the same and across it. And... No, no. It's um you have to work towards that. Yeah. Like either you have an understanding that okay, we are taking time for this because it's important for us and like you do with dates it's like you schedule your dates also you need to make time for you to be relaxed for you to be out of the family zone especially where you know you, it's like when sometimes you know you have a group of friends and you meet after you get married and have a child you meet them every like 6 months yeah. and then you sit in a bar like drinking like oh my god <laughs> like this is my only uh, form of release like why live a life like that like schedule at least something every month like every couple of weeks and same thing with your partner because you know having a drink is great sure but having sex is natural and it gives you much better and healthier you know highs than half a bottle of whiskey or whatever you drink correct and as soon as you add that word play to it like you said like you know when you think of sex as play it changes the dimension of it, it doesn't need to be spontaneous anymore Right, you can have a play date like how you set up for your children. You can have your play date, and you're exactly. like, "All right, we're going to play from four to five, and this is what we're going to do." And it actually works that way. It's not necessary that has to be spontaneous and just like, "Poof." Yeah, if we can regulate play time for our kids, then why can't we regulate play time for ourselves? And we're all big babies after <laughs> all, aren't we? All big babies, exactly. Lovely. So, um, you were talking about those four elements. I just wanted to go back to it right in the beginning of the podcast. You're talking about breath. You were talking about touch. You were talking about uh, eye, contact, eye contact, actions, and words. Words. Is there a hierarchy? Like you said, breath is super important. I know breath yeah. is super important. What would be the others be? I think um, to build it slowly and naturally, definitely breath is number one. Mm-hmm. So you can either breathe together, ideally, like. If you want to recreate a romantic or a spiritual scene, you can breathe together with like placing your hand on your heart and just synchronize the breath. Like either breathe in together or and breathe out together, or like breathe in and the other person breathes out. So you form a circle of breath. Mm. Once you start attuning to the other person through breath, then you focus on eye contact. Although these things will happen simultaneously. simultaneously. but you can also build arousal there are sev- several breathing exercises to kind of build erotic energy within your body like through squeezes or through releases and you can kind of visualize that energy going from your genital or from your arousal areas through the eyes into the other person so you start creating that attraction and mm-hmm. silence you know how many times even on a date i tell people like just be there and gaze at the person in silence you don't have to say anything you have to do anything the energy is going to do it on its own so you that eye contact and breath are like foundational like in, in any circumstance if you can't regulate your breath or you know uh, not coming at all it's because their breath is being altered by either anxiety or stress or their thinking brain so first step even for those challenges is breathing regulate your breathing and bringing the the awareness back to the body so you are doing a physical kind of exercise or you are engaging physically so it's important that you are in your body 
and not in your head thinking about stuff because that will kill the arousal completely. Right. It will kill the connection. So the breath helps you bring you into the body and the eye contact makes you deepen that sensation of being there with someone. Hmm. After that, you can start using words. In fact, like actions are in between words and touch, especially genital touch. So genital touch, even sexually, needs to be last. Right. It's like really the last resort and not always is needed also. Not necessary. Yeah. So after you've gone through words, things that you say to arouse during sex, brilliant. Most erectile... Bring it down or bring it up? Well, bring it in sync with your partner okay. will enhance the experience. All right. A lot of people who face uh, sexual issues like or face challenges like uh, erectile dysfunction, premature ejaculation, someone and you will have to kind of negotiate that because some people love to hear certain things. Other person loves to hear opposite. Correct. So how do you create that rhythm? And once you have build that erotic tension and then you can talk about things that arouse you. Then you can move into actions, for example. What are some some of the actions that you want? Is it like a command of making someone stand in the middle of the room naked and just walking around them? Because that's already arousing. So that's an action. Is it like holding someone by the wrists? That's also an action, right? Now, with respect to touch, it's important to also communicate like what is the touch that, you know, the other person enjoys? So once you've added words, you're already in a zone, you know, once you've added breath, eye contact and words into this mix and you start touching someone the way they want to be touched. You also have to enjoy the touch in your hands. So you have to make sure that your hands are actually expressing that erotic energy that exists already in your body that is flowing. So again, it's about understanding and being aware and mindful that this is the energy. It's coming through my eyes. It's coming through my breath. Now it's coming through my hands, Hands sometimes feet. Right. Some people like touching feet. Sometimes it's like body parts. Forehead, yeah. Yeah. So it's like you can touch any body part with your hands, with the back of your hands, with the front of your hands, with your elbows. So experience touch in its fullness across the body. And then last, maybe genitals. (laughs) <laughs> Irrelevant. <laughs> like last. You know, when we talk about this, right? And I know that people will be listening to this saying that I've never thought about sex in this way. Mm. I've always knew, known for lack of a better word, vanilla sex, which is like penetration and you're done. Like 30 seconds. How do you have that conversation with your partner to take it to this? Like, where do you even start? Like, oh, I heard this podcast. And then what? Like, the other person go, no, no, nonsense, nonsense, rubbish, rubbish. Like, how do you even begin that conversation with somebody? Yeah, again, I mean, you have to really be confident about the fact that it is important for you. You know, because there will always be someone who will rubbish it off. Correct. So the moment, and that's conditioning, right? Uh, now, do you want to uh, stick by that conditioning? Are you okay living in that conditioning? Or actually saying like, this is really important for me? Mm-hmm. I always give the example like when you are, when your partner is there and you are taking a decision like buying a house, mm. how important that is with or like, or buying a car and you really want that car. So you somewhere or the other, unless you are in that sort of relationship and then that, that's something that you should look into, mm. um, you will buy that car because there's nothing wrong in it. If I yeah. have the money and everything is set, then why shouldn't I not buy a car, for example? Same thing. Or have a say in it, or at least have a question in it, or at least bring up the topic. Yeah, it depends how important it is. If it is very important for you, then the way you approach the topic is like, I have heard this, Mm. I've heard about this car. Let's look at this car together on the phone or online. Let's see what are the features. I really want this. Can we try it out? Let's go for a test drive. Love it. I love the analogy. Yeah. (laughs) So I saw this the other day. Will we try it out? Let's do a test drive. Exactly. Test drive your... Sexual preferences. I Mm, love it. Okay, mm. super. Any last thoughts on this topic that, you know, you wish that we could cover? Like, what are one burning thing if you could, you know, shake the listeners up and say, you know, do this, you know, like from tomorrow onwards, think of your sexual, you know, wellness and from this point of view, what would it be? Yeah, definitely like forget this penetration business. Like, you know, especially like I'm just speaking from a obviously heterosexual point of view, although I myself, I'm not like I'm bi or like pan, whatever. 
But the obsession with sex being penetration just needs to stop. Like there's so much to it. There is so many, you know, research pieces that say that 80% of women, you know, orgasm through clitoral stimulation. So like you don't have to put anything inside so there is no need for you to feel pleasure, you know, to start worrying about your size, about the duration, about your skills, positions. None of that matters. What matters is pleasure. Is the other person experiencing pleasure by just like being caressed on the face, on the lips or being said certain things that can bring so much arousal and pleasure? How what what is working for you also? Like Correct. is Maybe oral sex better? Is it like hugging better? Whatever brings you pleasure. So shift definitely from, um, you know, penet from penetration to pleasure. Like from what you understand sex as, as pleasure. Also like foreplay. What does it mean? Like it's before something, something important needs to happen. It's not. It's not something. It's everything is... A sexual, flow, yeah, flow. it's like everything is like, I don't know if they, whether you should ban that word also, because it just gives that sense that this is something before the actual main course. Yeah. It's almost like your starter. Like I keep telling my friends that, you know, foreplay should start two days before, right? <laughs> like foreplay is all that build up to yeah. when you're supposed to meet a person. All yeah. of that is part of foreplay. Yeah. And uh, like the whole, the whole play can be foreplay. That's the yeah. whole point of it. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So you were continuing with this before we went on the foreplay tangent. Uh, yeah. So, you know, the focus is on pleasure. Uh, Should the focus be on arriving at an orgasm? Not necessarily. Correct. No, no. I mean, for some people, the goal is more important than the journey. Hmm. But we've heard it so many times that the journey is much more important than the goal. So <laughs> enjoy the process. Yeah. Enjoy the journey. Right. The journey has to be pleasurable. It's good for you, okay? It's actually good for you. It's natural. It's better than smoking a packet of cigarettes. It's better than like drinking half a bottle of whiskey. It's better than being on your phone for like five hours scrolling on images, uh, Instagram images, okay. you know. Your sexual experience is, is with your body and the pleasure you're giving your body is going to help you de-stress from daily life. There would be no wars if everyone was having mindful sex, correct? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I swear <laughs> I love it Okay Thank you so much For coming on the podcast How can people connect with you? Okay So you can find us On Instagram The Intimacy Curator We also have a website You can DM us And like book appointments Yeah Fantastic I'm sending a friend of mine to you yeah, Alright Thank you so much For coming on the podcast Thank you Now if you like this podcast Don't forget to check out Other interesting podcasts On the IBM Network you can listen to us on the IBM Podcast app or ibmpodcast.com. You can also follow us on social media. We are at IBM Podcasts on Twitter and Instagram. If you want to reach out to me, I am at Ashton Doc on Twitter and Instagram. We have a brand new habit coaching online course, quizzes, videos, and a lot more on the website awesome180.com. So check it out now. There's a quick survey to fill out on ivmpodcast.com slash survey. It lets us know a little bit more about who's listening to us. And you know what? We're going to do a few prizes. So, I mean, like, we'll do a random drawing of, like, maybe 10 people and we'll send you all some swag. Remember, that's ivmpodcast.com slash survey where you can fill out the survey. Namaste, this is Cyrus Brocha. I'm part of the government cancel culture program to remove rubbish off all the different streams available. So what we have is all the collected rubbish we put together on our show. It's called Cyrus Says. It's on IVM podcast. You have to watch it and listen to it. It's on our app. It's on our website. It's on the YouTube channel. It's on Facebook. There are many different ways. Don't bother me and ask me how. Uh, you have to find out. We talk to different personalities. Many of them are known. Some are just people we meet downstairs and invite them up for chai. But the point is, it's fun and it's very therapeutic. So please join in and listen to Cyrus Sess.